so uh, we are here in the third session today uh, we have been discussing um, we are discussing themes from bhagavad gita which are of practical use which will help us uh, you know understand uh, okay so we looked at two sessions the first one was uh, dealing with duality and the second one was dealing with diversity so the third session that we are going to take today is a title called as swadharma so swadharma means literally in sanskrit it means one's own role in the world as per one's body and mind okay so each of us by our own nature uh, we are attracted to a particular type of role or we naturally fit into a particular type of role um, and that role is called as swa dharma swa means my own and here dharma actually means uh, function or role in the world right so so this is a topic and uh, this is a very important topic in the gita which has a lot of practical relevance to our life in fact this is a verse in the gita third chapter which krishna repeats in the 18th chapter as well shreyan swadharmo vigunah paradharma sunushtita swadharme nidanam shreya paradharmo vayavah it is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties even though faultily than another's duties perfectly destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duty for to follow another's path is dangerous so this is a very very uh, practical advice given by krishna to arjuna here in the gita because he is basically telling telling arjuna that whatever you are meant for in the world it is better you stick to that even if you feel that there are some problems in it so arjuna is a fighter he is a kshatriya he is a administrator politician and uh, you know just because he was troubled or he had this uh, feeling that he cannot fight with his grandfather and teacher he thought maybe it is better to become a beggar and uh, you know I i'll take some sanyas or something and just beg but krishna wants to tell him that hey you can't do that because that's not very natural to you to be a sanyasi you cannot do that because by nature you have this particular quality of being a fighter being a administrator politician ruler etc just because you don't want to fight with your grandfather that doesn't mean you can change your profession okay so so this is something which is called as swadharma swadharma means because of our own body and mind also please remember we are attracted or we fit into a particular occupation okay so please remember this it's not only body but mind as well uh, just like all of you would know right that even in a game of cricket or football we often say that uh, a person uh, needs not only skill to play the game but he also needs a particular type of mental attitude where he can fit into that game of cricket or football right so we we all know this that it's it's not just about the body but it is also about the mind one needs a nature mental aptitude to gel in a particular profession right a any profession it could be uh, whether it's a sports person or you know, whether somebody wants to become a policeman or an army person it is not it is not just the physical strength uh, which is important that is certainly important you need a physique you need to pass certain tests uh, from a physical perspective to be in an army or police but uh, they also check whether you have that mental nature you know that mental aptitude to be in an army or a police before they take you in because otherwise you would not fit in it's not just about having a good physique right it's also about having that mental nature where you fit in that so similarly for any profession you need your body and mind that aligns with it so that is swadharma now connecting this theme to our earlier points uh, is that uh, in any profession there will be some challenges that will come okay as we discussed earlier when we discussed about duality right um, in any profession there will be some challenges rather than uh, feeling 
that at that time some one may feel that oh this profession is having this challenge let me take another profession but krishna is saying no that doesn't work because it's better to do your own occupation perfectly than someone else's right so so this is the theme so let's explore this theme today and let's try to see some you know lessons that we can learn from it so before we go any further into this topic we have to understand the meaning of the word dharma itself you know because in this compounded word swadharma there is this word dharma so dharma can so dharma actually it's it's this this word is generally translated as religion in the you know in the secular world today but actually religion is more uh, faith oriented whereas dharma is a universal ethic you know it's 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 not exactly faith it's a universal ethic okay so when we talk about universal ethic the first question that could come to someone's mind is are these ethics some some man made stuff or they are part of the world itself as in how do you look at it so you know i want to start with uh, something from greek philosophy so if you have if you have any background of that you would know that they use these three terms logos pathos and ethos so logos in that they look for logic you know in in the system so basically they say that nature has a logic in its system and because of that logic an emotion arises which is called as pathos and uh, because of that emotion there is a credibility or a, there are some rules that come which is called as ethics okay so if you if you look at it like this you would understand that actually this ethic or dharma it's not it's not exactly a man made but it is the nature actually tells us to be like that okay so i'm going to elaborate this with some examples so that you understand this better so first of all uh, you know there are these three terms used called satya rita and dharma okay satya is a unchanging reality rita is manifested reality which may change so just like the sanskrit word ritu comes from this rita only right like there is uh, varsha ritu or there is grishma ritu so that's the manifested reality i mean something that has manifested in prakriti in nature and dharma means it is said to submit to that okay so let's take some simple examples so so let's say uh, you know there are these various seasons right summer season winter season rainy season so on in each of the season submitting to that season or submitting to that ritu means following the rules as per that season you know or for example simple example like eating food according to those seasons uh if you see in very traditional societies people would actually ensure that their food habits were tuned to the season right it's so today for example through technology we may be able to have mango 12 months a year or you know we may be able to have some particular fruit which is not in a particular season available any time uh, but actually nature had it like that nature would ensure that you would get particular fruits or particular type of food stuff in certain areas certain way because it was you know that was the dharma that means that was the right thing to do that was the most ethic the perfect ethic to submit to that right or to give a more simpler example just like sleeping uh generally in societies in traditional societies or in most societies in the world people would sleep at night time because of the simple thing that when the sun rises the rita is telling you also to rise you know the nature is automatically kind of telling you that okay now let's do some work and when the sun sets and it becomes dark nature tells us that okay now it's time to go to sleep so submitting to that is called as dharma so somebody may say that no i don't want to do that i want to be awake entire night and i will sleep entire day you could do that but then that becomes a dharma that means you are going against the ritha and then uh, we see also that there are problems because of that correct i mean it's well documented that people who stay up late at night because it's not just about sleeping 6 or 7 hours it's about sleeping at the right time so there are enough studies that show that 
you need to sleep early get up early that's you know this is an old olden time wisdom and if you do that your health is good but if you so 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 submitting to that ritta is dharma i hope you are understanding this point right submitting to the reality submitting to nature is dharma going against it becomes a dharma now this this principle you can apply in all places in creation so just like for example uh, you know in, in in any species you will see that uh, a mother protects their offspring you will see that right a dog a leopard a lion an elephant any species let it be right when some the offspring is born to that species the mother is very very protective of that offspring okay so so that is dharma so but somebody may say that no i'll not or you know i mean in human society especially we see sometimes that uh, you know even a mother may give up the child etc so that that becomes a dharma that means you are not submitting to the universal ethic correct so or in any species you see that the strong protect the weak if, if you have observed any kind of uh, you know uh, documentary in uh, about wildlife you will see that if there are a herd of buffaloes or something and there is one buffalo that is young or weak or something and there is a lion coming to attack then you will see that the other strong buffaloes they immediately start fighting that lion and they drive him away so it's not just about saving oneself but those who are weak in the society or those who are more prone to be abused in some way the strong people of that society even in animal society they stand up against that and they fight it so this is dharma i mean this is this is this is how the reality of the world is correct so so now coming to human society specifically that is why the laws which are there are supposed to be based on such universal ethics okay just like if you take the mahabharat itself we know the famous story of draupadi being brought into the assembly by dushasan you can see that picture on the screen here and dushasan is trying to strip her naked and uh, she is actually pleading to bhishma and uh, drona and so many elders in the assembly that how can you allow this to happen to a woman in your presence what are you people doing simply sitting here and uh, they are all getting into some technical details oh it was your husband who put you on the bed and we cannot do much and so on and so forth so this becomes a dharma because as i was telling you that even in an animal society Uh, an animal will tend to protect their species the weak members of their species when they are being attacked by some external force uh, whereas in a human society when someone who is strong someone is capable like bhishma is a capable strong person is a commander he is sitting there and a woman is being insulted and she is pleading for help and if you don't help then that becomes a dharma so i hope you are able to appreciate the concept of dharma because this word dharma is actually not religion in an, in 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 the english equivalence of it right because because the, because dharma is unchangeable this is not about your faith whether you believe in jesus christ mohammed krishna or whatever i mean that's not the point here the point is whether you are following the universal ethic okay and you see this everywhere so just like if you know the beginning of ramayan the ramayan begins with the story that valmiki is doing you know some uh, meditation on the bank of a river and there he sees a hunter he happens to shoot a pair of birds engaged in mating okay now the thing is even among hunters there is this general rule or ethic that you should never shoot a species which is engaged in mating because that goes against the logos and pathos okay so if you go back to the greek idea of logos pathos ethos right so there is a logic in nature where uh, species come together they unite to produce offspring etc and there is an emotion associated with that at that particular point of time uh, just because the birds or that species is you know not in motion you cannot take advantage and shoot it at that time that's considered among the community of hunters completely unethical and and this is this is what i was saying that this is not like a man made system it is made 
being very conscious of the logic and emotion of jungle life, of forest life, about how everyone is to be treated. Okay, so this, so this is a broad, so I, I'm, I'm making all these points here in order to tell you what is dharma, this universal ethic. Okay, now we are speaking about all this because we are now going to talk about swadharma. Okay, now before going to swadharma again, from the Gita and uh, other Indian uh, books of philosophy, we understand there are three types of dharma, I'll tell that briefly, and then we will zoom into swadharma. One is called Swarupa Dharma. Swarupa means, so as we have discussed in our philosophy classes earlier, uh, the essential identity of a living entity that is Atma. Okay, that means he's a part and parcel of, he's, he's a spirit, right? He's not, the, the body is an external covering that he has. But fundamentally speaking, he's an Atma. So Swarupa Dharma means to engage in spirituality okay, of some kind, a yoga. Okay, it can be bhakti yoga, like you see in this picture over here, there is a woman who is, you know, doing some worship, uh, arati of her Ishtadeva. So this is called Swarupa Dharma, right? Where uh, you are engaged in connection with the absolute, which everybody does. Okay, so this is one thing. Then there is something called Swadharma. Swadharma, this term, this is meant for action that we can do in the world, which is in alignment with our mind and body. So this is what we will call in modern times as career or job or role in the world. That is all coming under the Swadharma. That means we are supposed to take a role in the world. We are supposed to pursue a career. We are supposed to do any of these things, which is most well aligned with our mental paradigm as well as our body and the abilities that we have. Okay, so this is called Swadharma. But there is something else called Apadharma. Apad dharma in English can be translated as emergency dharma. Like what you see the photograph here is the photograph of soldiers being drafted into an army in, during the Vietnam war in the US. So sometimes a country is at war and they will draft everybody as a soldier. Now all the people who join as soldiers, they are not originally meant to be soldiers because that's not their uh, natural calling. But then it's an emergency. Your country is at war with some country for whatever reason, maybe political or whatever. But then the country wants people. So as an emergency, they draft anyone and everyone into the army. So this is one way of understanding Apadharma. Another way of understanding Apadharma is that uh, a person wants to earn money, right? Just like most in India today, uh, you know, as a professor in a college, I have noticed this, that most students after 12th standard, they want computer engineering. Now, if you really ask them or interview them or see if they have the aptitude, it is not always like that. They don't seem to have that. But then why are they taking computer engineering? Because they believe that this is a place where good jobs exist and we will get money and I need money. So, you know, everything, all other considerations are not important. It's an emergency that money has to be made. So let's take up to this field. So, right. So this is what happens in our country at the present time where most people choose a career more as an emergency than considering their liking or their real inner call or passion. This liking, inner call, passion is Swadharma. But considerations of uh, some emergency in the country or emergency in the family or the need to somehow make money and survive this all could be called as Apadharma. Okay. So our topic is Swadharma here because in the Gita, Arjuna's Swadharma was very clear. He was a Kshatriya. Right. So let's, let's explore this more. Yeah. Next. Yeah. So the first question is who decides Swadharma? How do we understand our Swadharma? Okay. So this is a point we need to first discuss. Okay. So in this, I would make one point right away. This is made by a very famous uh, scholar from uh, South India. His name is Vedanta Desika. He was a saint and a scholar in the 14th century, 15th century India. So, so he, 14th century actually. So he wrote that if someone else decides your Swadharma, it means he has an agenda. So basically he starts by saying that you yourself have to decide your Swadharma. No one else can decide it for you. 
others can maybe act as a helping hand or you know they can just ha me ha na me na kind of right but they can't be the prime uh, decision maker of your swadhar because if somebody is doing that then it means that he has an agenda he wants you to do something uh, which suits his own purpose so just like here in the gita if you go back krishna was not asking arjuna to fight the battle because krishna wanted that to happen no that was not the point it was arjuna's need to fight okay because otherwise somebody many many authors or commentators without this understanding when they read gita and Mahara, mahabharat they end up with a conclusion that maybe krishna was a war monger he wanted the war badly that is why he was making arjuna fight no it's not the point actually krishna is not telling arjuna to fight because he wanted the war or you know he wanted it to happen like that he was telling him because it was his nature arjuna's nature to do so okay so the thing is one has to decide this once now how does that happen so generally four factors are said to help okay first thing is we ourselves with honest introspection or swadhyaya can decide swadharma i mean you yourself have to decide what is your inner calling or real nature to do work in the world what kind of uh, role in the world what kind of career what kind of job or anything you know what, what kind of uh, how would you like to contribute in the world that you have to decide by honest introspection i'm using the word honest because this is not based on some comparison it's not that oh because my neighbor is earning a lot of money in this profession i will also take that only no then it doesn't become very honest because you are not very honest with yourself you are just kind of choosing something due to some other considerations or swadhyaya means study okay so by one's own introspection study one can understand that where one is most suited that's first factor second is time uh, if it is not clear very immediately then one may do whatever you know is the whatever most people are doing but with time one gets an understanding where one is most suited in the world time also teaches us a good lessons third is someone who has observed as very closely could suggest again they cannot dictate but they can suggest uh, so generally if you had a coach in life that's why you know there is an importance of a coach or a, or a teacher who has seen you from very close quarters like sometimes in schools we used to have the system where there was one teacher who was there with the student for several years that actually would help because the teacher sees the student very closely and then the teacher could help tell the student that hey look this is where it seems your major strength lies you know because these uh, these are the interests or the swadharma is actually clear in the childhood itself it is just that it is not clear to us but actually in the personality it has already come you know so just like if you take the example of the pandavas itself now see that's another interesting point even though all the pandavas were kshatriya or military people by nature each of them had a different uh, weapon which they excelled at right if you if you look at the mahabharat bhima was good with the mace arjuna with the bow and arrow uh, yudhishthir with the spear and nakul and sahadev with a sword and an axe uh, now the point is uh, the mahabharat says that when these pandavas were born in the forest they had some teachers in the forest this was before they came to hastinapur and learned under dronacharya so when they were in the forest they had some teachers and there itself these five pandavas by the age of 12 or 13 they spent almost 12 years in the forest before they came to hastinapur uh and and in these 12 years itself they understood which weapon they are meant to excel at because so bhima had already chosen the mace as his weapon of choice and similarly arjuna had chosen bow and arrow and so on and so forth so the point is uh so actually this is what education is ideally meant to be you know they say that this english word education comes from a greek word educari which means to bring out what is within you so this swadharma is actually within each of us but uh, the process of education is meant to help us discover what is our original calling in terms of how we wish to contribute 
Okay, it's a it's a different point that sometimes education doesn't help in that, but that's the purpose of it. Okay, so that's why I'm saying someone who has observed us closely could suggest. And finally, there is astrology as well. So for those who uh, you know who know something about it, in astrology there are indications based on the planets uh, where this person perhaps could have his inclination. It's again an indication. So anyway, so these are some factors which are there. So the bottom line is. it is we ourselves who have to decide that for a period of time okay and and it's not that difficult also uh over time one actually understands that this is where i am best at so another thing when we talk about swadharma is that swadharma doesn't only uh, apply to our uh, profession it also applies to our hobbies okay so so people have hobbies as well right so that is also as per their nature they are supposed to find some hobby which interests them because life gets very boring otherwise if there is only work 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 and no recreation okay krishna also says in the gita yukta hara vihara se yukta cheshtasya karmasu vihara means some kind of recreation hobby is needed to give some color to life now again if you look at the pandavas it's very interesting they were not just uh, interested in fighting wars and you know doing all this politics which was certainly their main interest but they had other interests as well like uh, so this becomes clear in the mahabharata when the pandavas are approaching the 13th year of exile so if you know the story 12 years they had to be in the forest and in the 13th year they had to spend incognito they had to spend in a place where they conceal themselves and if duryodhan manages to spot them then another 12 years they have to go to the forest so you know duryodhan thought that i'll permanently keep these people in forest so that was his evil plan so in the 13th year so after 12 years in the forest the pandavas had to decide where they will spend their 13th year incognito so they they come together and decide that they will spend in a kingdom called virata and uh, and they also decided to take up various roles now these roles were in tune with their own liking their hobbies like yudhishthir took the role of an advisor to the king and also playing this game of dice and chess and all that so he was good at that and that's why actually he earlier he had ended up gambling as well so so that was kind of his hobby bhima had this hobby of cooking okay so he was interested in that so he said that i'll be a cook arjun despite being so good with uh, archery he was good with music and dance so he thought that i will be a music dance teacher to all the girls in the palace then nakul decided to uh, take care of horses because he was good with that and sahadev decided to take care of the cows he was again he was you know that was something that suited his nature and draupadi decided to be like a beautician for the queen you know she had a lot of knowledge about it how to decorate yourself your hair and so on and so forth apply facials or whatever right so she was good with that so this she decided to be a hair dresser and a beautician for the queen uh, so the interesting thing here is in that 13th year also the activities that the pandavas chose to do they were like their hobbies these were things that they were already good at right it was not that bhima started cooking in the 13th year he was already good at it this was something that he was pursuing similarly taking care of the horses the cows these animals etc or singing and dancing for arjuna so these were so this was also based on swadharma right so this is also based on your own individual nature now another thing you have to appreciate here is the swadharma again see when we say swadharma it is not only your career or your natural calling it has to be in line with dharma also that's why earlier i spoke about dharma right so no one can say for example that my natural calling is to be a drug drug peddler so i am going to you know buy wholesale drug from uh, drugs from afghanistan through some uh, you know smuggling route and i am going to sell that because that's my natural calling no the problem you cannot do that because it doesn't align with the universal ethic called as dharma so if you remember i mentioned that right so the point is it is not only important to have a career or a hobby in life which is your inner call 
but that should be something beneficial to the universe that should align with the universal ethic right that should not be a disturbance to society right that should that should that should contribute positively to society so so these are other considerations as well only then it becomes swadharma so swadharma is not just career it is about having a role in the world where there is a meaningful contribution and that's exactly what you see with the pandavas right so they had their role as kshatriya they had their weapons which they were really interested in and at the same time they had hobbies and all these if you carefully see they were in line with dharma right they they these these were not uh, something completely aloof from the so all these were in line with them so so this is the speciality of uh, right this particular thing called as sadhan yeah now another thing which i would briefly like to uh, make uh, a point i would like to make is even when it comes to spirituality there is a unique way in which the gita and our uh, broader vedic literature allows one to express one's devotion to god okay so there are several yoga paths like karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga and in bhakti yoga also there are several ways in which one connects to god someone like shravanam that means to hear about him someone like kirtana like like nowadays this vari is going on right to pandarpur so all the varkaris are walking on the street from alandi to pandarpur chanting jay jay ram krishna hari so they are doing kirtana correct someone like archana worship in a temple like the situation right so so if you see uh, there are about 9 or 10 ways nine uh, ways of uh, in which prominently one could express one's bhakti to god so the point is even in that there is a variety kept so all these varieties kept with this idea that different people will be attracted to different different facets of life because all this comes as part of the swadharma because it's an inner call it is what you like to do uniquely right so so that is how this particular theme is okay now moving further on this yeah so what are the advantages really of sticking to swadharma okay so the first thing is the first and the most important advantage if you stick to something in life that is your inner call is dualities are minimized for you okay so you may recall in our session of duality we mentioned this point that anything has a flip side so any profession also has a flip, flip side but if that profession is your natural inner call then because you naturally like to do it whatever problems may come in that you may not you may you may find it very easy to tackle it okay so let's say that someone is a you know a, a businessman so someone who is not a business person who doesn't have the mental proclivity or nature to be a business person may find it extremely difficult and may find the pain of doing business too much but someone who is a businessman whatever pain or problem comes as part of uh, you know doing a business for such a person all that is very less i mean he doesn't feel okay so you may feel you or i may feel that uh, oh this is very difficult you know be doing business is very difficult that we may feel because it may not be our nature to be a businessman but for someone for whom that's a swadharma that becomes very easy so that's what i mean by saying dualities are minimized for you second thing is contribution to society is maximized because you are doing something where you have maximum passion your output is very high and when your output is very high you are able to make an effective change in the world that's the second part and the third thing life itself is not a burden because there is some pleasure obtained in the action itself okay so it's not just about the result the action itself is pleasing to somebody so someone so someone by nature let's say is an army man or a woman and they are in the you know so they go to the border to fight or whatever you know that action itself is pleasing to them because that's what they like to do so life is not a burden because it's it's very natural for you right and in this way society progresses actually if you see the indian system of varna was actually that so this brahman kshatriya vaishya shudra these jatis which were there 
they were originally based on this concept only that what everyone is naturally most suited to they stay in that okay and exceptions were always accommodated like we see in the mahabharata karna he was known to be the son of a shudra but he was accommodated as a kshatriya because he very clearly had characteristics of a kshatriya his natural call was a kshatriya so that part was accommodated only okay. it, it was not that nobody was so rigid uh, in terms of birth like you see vidura in the mahabharata is a prime minister of the king though he is like a son of a shudra that right? is a son of a dasi but that was not considered because he had that uh, amazing talent as well as nature to be the prime minister for the king so he was given that position so this was always there in indian society it wasn't as rigid as maybe medieval times etc okay so i want to give an example also over here this is something that we i encountered one of my friends told me this he had encountered this some months ago so this is about uh, you know in, in so this was in mumbai so he met a person he met two people actually so they were a team so there was this lady who was selling uh, jewel ornaments you know diamond ornaments made of diamond etc and various precious stones and she had a carrier a worker who would actually make these necklaces you know who would uh, right who would design these okay now the point was that this carrier who was there this worker he was getting a fixed salary whatever it may be 1 lakh rupees or whatever per month he was getting that but this lady who was selling these she was making much more money you know because she was easily making several lakhs a month so one of my friends he happened to ask this carrier hey uh, you are working for this lady where you are making you are doing all this work of uh designing or making this uh, jewelry but she is the one who is selling and uh, you know making a lot of money so don't you feel that uh, had you yourself sold this directly to the customer you would have made more money because ultimately you are the one who is making the necklace she is only selling it so this carrier what he said was very interesting this worker he said that hey look i get decent money for making these uh, ornaments i'm happy in that and i more importantly i know very well that i can't do what this lady is doing okay she has so many contacts all over the world and she has an amazing way of presentation she can convince anybody to buy any kind of necklace i can't do all this i can't speak so nicely the way she does and neither can i take the risk of putting so much money investing and getting all these diamonds in one place and i am not even confident that they will sell so though i know to design and make the ornament selling is not my cup of tea so i am okay that i am getting 1 lakh she may be getting 20 lakhs a month that's fine you know her job is different my role is different so that's fine so this is uh, this was actually like how the varnashram worked where it is cooperative lifestyle right so everyone has a swadharma so here this man identified his swadharma is to design or make the necklace that lady understood that she cannot make these necklaces but she has a brain how to sell it okay she has all contacts in the world she can call anybody and she she exactly knows what to say and ensure that person will buy the necklace from the from her okay so so this is swadharma so when you stick to your swadharma you are happy with your contribution and you are not necessarily envious or comparing with the other person somebody else may make more money or less money that's a different thing the question really is are you happy in what you are doing okay, so this becomes a very important question in this whole swadharma so when we don't stick to swadharma what happens right so somebody may say okay i will not stick to it okay so the answer is yes sometimes as i had mentioned earlier there is something called apad dharma or emergency dharma which may which one may do sometime in life but entire life cannot be that because then what happens is uh you get little frustration that's one thing and more importantly krishna says something very amazing in the gita uh krishna says sadrisham cheshtate swasya prakritay jnana van api prakritim yanti bhutani nigraha kim karishyati that last line is significant nigraha kim karishyati what can repression accomplish krishna says even a man of knowledge acts according to his own nature for everyone follows the nature he has acquired from the three modes sattva rajas tamas what can repression accomplish so the point is if you force somebody into something and ask him to repress 
his own swadharma it doesn't work you know i want to share a personal example that i encountered i encountered many of them but one was very striking this was when i was the head of department of computer engineering several years ago in our college so you know so many times you know parents come would come to meet me so there was uh, so there was one student in i think he was in third year computer engineering his parents one day just came to my office they wanted to know how their son is doing uh, they so we had an erp so i knew the boy's result so those days we had a system where a student could go to third year with all backlogs of first year second year etc so this boy had actually failed in first year second year and he had a ton of uh, backlog subjects and he was in third year computer engineering so i told the father and mother that see this is how your son is he has failed in so many subjects so they were like shocked because what had happened was this boy had told his parents every semester that i have passed in all subjects you know and he produced some fake uh, you know thing also to convince his parents so his parents had actually casually come to meet me but when they realized that things are so bad they were aghast then i called this boy also to my office and i asked him hey why are you doing this why why are you telling your parents a plain lie you know why are you telling just that you passed in all subjects when the reality is that you have failed so he told me something which i never forget he said that sir look you know i was never interested in this computer engineering i had absolutely no interest in this my interest is event management i like to you know that was my goal to study event management you know run something for some television like so you know these television houses are there right where they manage all their uh, these uh, soap operas these television serials i i want to go into that then i said why didn't you do that he said that say look you know my father actually forced me into computer engineering you know he he, he has a lot of money so he just pushed me into this college and he told me that you have to study computer engineering only because this is only good for you all the event management is all nonsense don't do this so i thought that well i am anyway not interested in this and my parents have forced me so i will also teach them a lesson i will uh, you know not study and i'll just tell them that i have passed and uh, let's see what happens so he was so cool about it i immediately called the parents and i told them that hey look before any more damage is done you please cancel your son's admission in a college find an event management or whatever your son wants put him in that because he has a passion for it he may actually do very well in life why do you force him in something very very clearly told you in the first place of the 12th standard that he doesn't want to do so this is what krishna is saying what can repression accomplish when is forced to act as per one's nature okay so somebody has one strong inner calling you can't simply force that person it doesn't i have seen many of these it's not just this is one case that immediately comes to my mind but as a teacher i have seen many cases where students they have chosen uh, especially computer engineering because this is the area where people come uh, because they feel that there is a lot of money in this so they come here but then later they understand that you know they are not interested in it or whatever and, you know they just continue for the sake of it and so on so it doesn't give that satisfaction so so the point is when you don't stick to your swadharma pain is higher duality is higher and social contribution gets affected you can't do much because that's not your real core and you remain frustrated as well so so these are some points here right right yeah so 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 another important point see because we have to balance or we have to complete everything. so let's go back once again to the mahabharat so this may be the last slide i have before i summarize and then we end um you know there are three things which are significant here one is action which is the swadharma that i'm talking which is the first point i mentioned on the slide it means kriya kriya means action as per your nature second is that action should be in alignment with dharma universal ethic okay so it's not just that you have to do action but it has to be in alignment with universal ethic like for example if you go back to the mahabharata you will see people like duryodhan karna dushyasan etc they were all doing things action as per their nature swadharma they were doing but it was not dharma only in the first place as in they were using all their powers to do the wrong action or to do things that were damaging to society are you getting this point so it's it's not just about doing work as per our inner call but that action has to have something positive for society it's not that we are misusing it so 
So there are so many people who are terrorists or so many, so many different types of anti-social elements are there in society today. They all also may be doing action as per their nature, but that is not in alignment with dharma or universal ethic. So that's a problem. So there are three things here. One thing is we need to do action as per our nature. That is a swadharma. Second thing is that swadharma should be in alignment with the basic dharma of universal ethic. Right? Okay, so you may wonder that the word dharma appeared two places. So don't get confused. If you remember, I defined dharma as submitting to the reality. So action as per our nature is also called swadharma because it is submitting to the reality. That means if your body is of a nature, body and mind is of a nature of a business person, then submitting to that reality is swadharma. Correct? Because, because your body and mind as a nature of a businessman, so you are choosing an occupation or a profession by submitting to that. So that becomes swadharma. Okay, but then there is something called dharma. Now, this dharma is again the same meaning, but it is a universal ethic. That means, is your swadharma in alignment with the basic dharma itself? As in, are you doing something which is increasing or which is adding a value to the universe, or are you doing things which are actually going to destroy things? Okay, you may be doing something as per your nature. So, that swadharma part may be taken, like Karana and Duryodhan. They were fighting, you know, they were also just like the Pandavas only, right? They had all these skills of how to use weapons and they were interested in governing the country. So that Swadharma was there in their life. But basic Dharma was not there because they didn't submit to the universal ethic, right? I mean, the very fact that they were ready to abuse a woman and that was their family member uh, in a public assembly by trying to strip her indicated that that was just one indication. Basically, in their life, Universal ethic wasn't there. Dharma wasn't there. And now somebody may say, okay, if these two are there, are there enough? So no, then the Bhagavad Gita talks of something called as yoga as well. Yoga means one has to have a spiritual connect. Okay? Because life becomes complete when every aspect of life gets addressed. So there is a spiritual connect as well, which the Atma needs to have with the Paramatma, etc. So that is accomplished by this called as yoga. Okay, which is spiritual connect. So now, you know, I have three examples here. On one hand, on the left side in the screen, you would see Duryodhan and Karna. So these people were following only point number one. That means they were doing swadharma, action as per their nature. That they were doing. Now, if you look at Bhishma and Drona, they were doing one and three. They were acting as per their nature and they also had a spiritual connect in their life. But uh, they did not have that universal ethic they missed out. Uh, not always, but especially they missed it out with Draupadi, they missed it out with whenever Duryodhan was doing all his nefarious acts, Bhishma and Drona unconsciously, unconsciously were supporting him. You understood? So in that manner, they were not supporting the universal ethic. Okay. As an individual, they were very supporting dharma or universal ethic, but in the role of their administrator, they weren't. So, so that became a problem. That's why they had to be killed in the war. If you look at the Pandavas, they are the ideal example. Because they chose action as per their nature. Swadharma was taken care. Not only Swadharma in terms of action, Swadharma in terms of hobby also they had taken. And that hobby also in line with Dharma only. Please try to understand. Like, like nowadays we see, you know, people are, you know, I mean, it's very unfortunate that, you know, just like during this IPL, I read about it that so much of, so many youngsters spent so many crores of rupees gambling away on this team 11 and all this nonsense, right? So they are doing something uh, for hobby, but then that is going against the universal ethic, you know, because they are just, you know, ruining their whole life only in this. Okay, so the Pandavas, if you see, they had all three. They had action as per nature, so dharma was there. They had basic dharma also in their life because the universal ethic they were following. Now you may say that, okay, uh, Yudhishthir gambled away his wife, Yes, as a human being, everybody does some mistake in their life. But one mistake doesn't define you. Other than that one event of gambling their wife away, Yudhishthir and the Pandavas didn't do any other mistake in life. So you have to also appreciate this fact that yes, as a human being, everybody is susceptible to do some mistake at some point of time. Uh, but as long as they realize that and they decide not to repeat it, 
one needs to appreciate them for it right so the pandavas were like that uh, their action were as per their nature swadharma they obeyed universal ethic and they also had an amazing spiritual connect in their life so all three is done and when all three are done that is the bhagavad gita in action then you become a very holistic human being in your life where you are you know you are actually satisfied also with your accomplishments you are able to contribute to society and your soul is also nourished in connection with god so so this is actually what the gita is trying to teach us and trying to promote right so my last slide for today yeah yeah so the take home lessons today first thing i said is uh, the talk today was swadharma and by swadharma i meant action as per one's body and mind but before going into that we discussed what is dharma itself i said dharma is submitting to universal ethic so this definition is important because first of all dharma is not religion and also dharma is strictly not man made it is something which is very natural so just like i said right it's natural to sleep at night and work during the day it is unnatural to be awake at night and uh, sleep during the day because you are going against the okay similarly food similarly everything else in this world it's natural to protect your children it's unnatural if somebody kills their own children for whatever reason it is right so submitting to the universal ethic is called as dharma now swadharma means what understanding that your body and mind has a reality so if you remember i said dharma means to submit to ritha and ritha means a manifested reality so this body is also a manifested reality this body has some capabilities understanding those capabilities and submitting to that becomes swadharma and when i define swadharma i also define two other types of dharma called swarupa dharma which is your uh, connect with spirituality and apad dharma which is an emergency based thing which somebody may do because they want to earn money badly or whatever or maybe the government forces them that is apad dharma then we ask the question who decides swadharma so i quoted vedanta desikan who said that no one decides swadharma for you if somebody decide he has an agenda so you have to decide what basis well introspection swadhyaya with time with maybe some help from your teachers or people who know you very closely and astrology as well then we spoke about some of the advantages of sticking to swadharma and the prime advantage being duality is very less your contribution to society is more and the prime pitfall is that repression doesn't accomplish anything we saw several examples i quoted i quoted the example of the student of computer engineering who was just not interested in just an even management he bumped into it and he started or i also quoted how when people stick to swadharma there is a good cooperative lifestyle i spoke about the example of this lady who sells jeweled ornaments and the carrier the worker who makes it but they weren't really competing they understood their skills and they were fit in that and then i said besides swadharma there is also importance of dharma itself okay so i gave the example of the kauravas duryodhan uh, and company who were uh, leading their life as per swadharma but they didn't have the universal ethic only as a kshatriya you are supposed to protect women none of this they had right so so that was a problem and even bhishma and drona they were in positions where they should have protected draupadi but they did not rather they continued to support duryodhan's nefarious activities throughout his life uh, but there's a third thing called spiritual connect which is yoga so none of these three can be compromised compromised or left behind nobody can think that i will do only swadharma i will not bother about universal ethic neither will i bother about spiritual connect no you cannot do that nor can someone say that i am only interested in spirituality but i have nothing to do with my swadharma or universal ethic no that's not possible because the reality is that you have a body and mind and you have to submit to it and no one can say that only ethic is important for me and nothing else so so basically the gita teaches us how to integrate all three nicely and when we do that then uh, we actually truly prosper in right with that i end the day and uh, we can just take some questions if any right so if there are any questions so you can ask me right now anybody with a raise of hand Yeah. So who is that? Yeah, Anish, go ahead. 
Uh, in that uh, shloka that he, uh, you quoted, uh, nigaha means uh, I, uh, I passion, right? Uh, so, nigraha kim karishyati? Yes, sir. Uh, so it means a passion, right? Uh, for seeing something. No, nigraha means uh, to artificially suppress. Nigraha. Nigraha karna matlab to artificially stop it. Uh, okay. means, so just like that computer engineer, he, he was originally interested in event management, right? But his family was suppressing his need for that artificially. It was not natural. That's the point. Uh, so so uh, my question is, uh, we consider Paramatma to be the eternal love, uh, eternal bliss, Satchidananda. Then uh, why in the Vishnu Sastanam, uh, in the line Pagaho Nigaho Vyagaho Naika Shango Gadaka Jaha, uh, he is called Nigaha, that is uh, artificial suppression. No, no, once again, no, no, no. I think there is some issue here. I, I understood, I know the Sastanam as well. Pragraho Nigraho Vyagro. That Nigraha, see, we'll have to see this Sanskrit now in different, different contexts the meaning can be totally different. We'll have to see. Uh, I don't immediately recall. I'll check that and let you know later what is the meaning of Nigraha in that sense. But you can't just take the meaning over here and put it at that. Here, the word Krishna uses Nigraha in the Bhagavad Gita is clearly artificial suppression. Okay. Now, it could have a positive meaning as well. To suppress, to you know, subdue somebody it can also be called as Nigraha. I, I would like to see more into that in the Sasranama way that Pragraho, Nigraho, Vyagraho, that uh, in that line, what you're quoting, what it means. But uh, certainly, uh, you know, that's not this one. So this is, this is clearly in this context. So we'll have to, Sanskrit words are such that we'll have to see it in an entire context. It's context sensitive. We'll have to see in the context, what is the meaning. And here in the context, the meaning is very clear. It is about uh, artificially suppressing one's nature and trying to do something else, which doesn't work. So that's exactly what Arjuna was also trying to do. He thought that I will suppress my nature as a Kshatriya and try to be a Brahmana and I'll go around and beg. So Krishna says that will not work because you are a Kshatriya. So, and that's your very strong nature. So you cannot suddenly become a Brahmana just by adopting the dress because that will be very artificial. So it's in that context that he said. Is that okay? I'll find that out more and let you know. Right? Yes, Sampada, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So I was thinking like if I have found my Swadharma like by doing all the factors that can help. So like will it happen after some time that because of maybe some reasons like experience or some external factors that the inner calling might change. So like how to identify or like validate that the one you have chosen is the right Swadharma. Yeah, see, uh, one thing is time teaches us. So I had included time as one of the aspects of Swadharma. Yes. With time, we understand that. See, Swadharma is something which is a very natural calling of a person to do, which will not change with time. Okay, so, it's, so what could change is the details. So let's say, for example, somebody has identified himself as a businessman. He, he knows that his nature is to do business. Right. I mean, that's like an inner call. Very strongly, he knows that mujhe danda hai karna, mujhe nahi karna hai So, now, the, the type of business that he does may change with time. So, that part is okay. I mean, he may start dealing in garments first and later he may go into uh, maybe uh, wood and uh, steel or something. You know, he may change the nature of business. But uh, the business businessman, you know, that spirit of entrepreneurship, if that is the core nature of a person, that will not go away. So similarly, one is an intellectual. Somebody is interested in research. You know, he may be doing research in some field today. Tomorrow, he may change his field of research. But that fundamental need of, you know, wanting to do research, wanting to study some more knowledge, that will not go from the person. It may change the direction from, you know, from one thing to another. That can happen very much. I hope you are understanding my point. Okay, so so with time, if uh, so, I, I think that one has to be a little flexible also because see, many times what happens is there can be multiple swadharmas also. They, they, you could have interest in maybe two fields also. Okay, like the Pandavas also. 
like arjuna if you see carefully he was not only interested in politics he was also very good in art okay he he knew what was technically the mahabharat calls as gandharva vidya gandharva vidya means music and dance so that was also something very natural to him he liked it that was so so he had you could say that he had a secondary swadharma as well besides being a, a warrior he also had a lot of interest in music and dance and uh, and whenever the opportunity presented he would take it up okay so so this is also possible that one has multiple uh, you know kind of interest maybe a couple of them but still even in that one will stand out more than other but then again sometimes what happens you know sampada according to our uh, situation in life something can be emergency you know so that's why the apad dharma also is spoken about right like for example let's say a woman is there let's say she is married and she has a baby so you know because she has a baby at that time she may choose some career or some option which is more in line with that so right so because life is such that there can be so many dynamics that could come in one's life one may change one's career or position in the world uh, which suits all that so, so does that make sense yes sir so so we can say that as time progresses uh, so dharma will become more rigid or the definition will become more more clear i would clear yeah more clarity in life with time mm. see many times and especially in today's education system you know what happens is that we all gain a particular type of knowledge and then we just get a job based on you know whatever we have studied or you know what yeah. are available in the campus placements so that's how we start our careers most of the time but then with time you can refine that better even even if the job is to your liking today with time you may feel that okay i would like this better this role better and especially if one uh, you know money becomes a parameter where you have solved it out by and large which is actually ideal ideally money should not be a parameter to decide what we want to do because then that becomes so that's what is happening in our country na right now everybody is taking to computer engineering not really because everybody likes programming or is passionate about it because they believe that isme paisa bahut hai you know there is money in it that's why they are coming so it's more as apad dharma okay so let it be my point is even let people come because of apad dharma to computer engineering at least okay let them make money for 15 20 years at least at that time they can think right what to do okay you have made money you made four five crores or whatever you wanted now you can think you know what is it that satisfies you more what's it your inner call because there money will also come with time but then your contribution will be more and you will be more happier make sense yes yes uh, i also had another question but i think you have answered it partially so it's it's like are there uh, like more than one swadharma like you said for hobbies yeah. it can be a different swadharma and after some time will it switch or get swapped like that no so yeah clearly there can be more than one that's the example i gave from the mahabharata mm. there can be something called as primary secondary like yudhishthir he was not only good as an administrator he was also a good advisor see that's why mm. yudhishthir took the role of kanaka in that virata parva in the mahabharata where he becomes the advisor to the king so he had that capability also yeah. he had that role also not just be the king but also be a prime minister to a king even if he is not the king it's okay he can be a minister he can be an advisor he can be a counselor to somebody he had that ability also which he brought out right uh, but clearly even among that in one you would do slightly better at least the pandavas clearly knew that which was primary which was secondary as far as we are concerned that's our discovery that we need to make in life yeah yes sir thank you so much yeah thank you everyone uh, any other question okay uh, anish has one more question so i'll allow him to take that go ahead yeah Uh, so so we uh, like uh, you said that uh, to know our own swadharma we have to like consult someone who has observed us uh, that is yeah. one of the ways i didn't say that's the only one way of the way. one of the one ways of the because way. if someone has observed us very closely over a long period of time please remember not that they just saw us in one semester in college if they have seen us in a decent period of time because you know they may have a neutrality where they could tell us also hey look maybe you are good in this field like that that kind of uh, so yes sir 
सो हाउ कैन वी लाइक ऑथेंटिकेट ऑफ वैलिडेट अ पर्सन टू बी सच अ गाइड लाइक ओके you can authenticate that person to be a guide if you had that long term relationship and investment with that person so please try to understand this is possible see this type of a relationship na it needs time it needs investment of time uh, generally that's why i said school teacher because i felt that in school sometimes you know we have been more close to the teachers that in college where it becomes more transactional you just come and and uh, many times so so it you can validate that if the relationship was close you know that's the bottom line the relation should have been close where the teacher observed you also very closely right otherwise that's not even with parent it is possible but i didn't say parent intentionally because sometimes parents may have a bias uh, because of love for us you know like i have two children so sometimes because of love for them we tend to have a bias but sometimes a teacher is more neutral because he or she may not have any direct interest in what we do as in they have no direct agenda but uh, you know they may have an objective way of looking at it you know so so these are the guidelines for that okay. if somebody could advise and is even possible in college also uh, but only thing for that in college you should have a prof or a mentor you know whom you are close with you know whom you have worked with in some projects for a long period of time etc you know like typically a masters or a phd guide can be like that because they observe you for a longer time so maybe they could if they are really objective yeah but 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 they should also have some qualification but ultimately let me tell you the ball is in our court you cannot just go behind whoever has told now if you go back to the pandavas no one told arjun that you should excel in bow and arrow because his own discovery no one told bhima that you go ahead and excel in mace fighting it was his discovery so the responsibility the buck stops with us only because if you can't outsource that to somebody <laughs> yeah yeah we'll end yes, here sir, tomorrow at 8 o'clock all of you please join thank you